So in the light of the sad, sad death of uh, Diego Armando Maradona recently, um, we bring you a special tribute episode. Um, the first one, actually, with our guest in the studio, uh, friend of the show, Mo Harp, um, who's joined us to pay tribute to this absolute footballing legend who sadly passed away a couple of days ago. Um, we look through his career, some memorabilia that we have, and a never-seen-before insight into a special reunion with Maradona. Um, so, uh, Mo, yeah, yeah. Um, a sad, a sad moment for for sport in general. For, for the entire world. Um, we, w- we wanted to touch base with you and kind of hear from you about um, the times that you've actually met Diego and just some, some memories that are, that are fun to you with regards to those meetings. Just a smile on my face when I like, say met Maradona, although like he's gone now, sad enough for football in general. Because like Maradona was football to me, to many people, right? But uh, meeting him was like my uh, eternal dream, my like, uh, I've always wondered if I will ever meet him when I was a kid growing up because I grew up loving Maradona and he's like the reason why I loved football. So I knew Maradona before I knew football. And I was blessed enough like around nine years ago to meet him for the first time in here. And that was like my best memory out of him before uh, we even progressed later for many other stuff that you once uh, were part of. But that first time that I met him was like my best moment ever, to be honest. And it was because it was like by chance. He was like walking in one of Dubai's hotels. And I was uh, walking and we uh, crossed paths. And the first thing I like said uh, was my like broken sort of Spanish uh, that Senor Diego, I, I need like uh, to have a picture with you. That's like the, the, the first thing. And he was like, see, si, see, si, see. Si. And he was like smoking his cigar. And smoking indoors wasn't allowed, but he was. Yeah. That's Diego. Of course. He was somebody holding an ashtray and uh, <laughs> chasing him. And he was like uh, sort of in a happy mood. So uh, you meet Diego or you meet Maradona. This is what they say. But I say like you meet either Maradona or Maradona. And it's like your lucky day if you meet that Maradona or that Maradona. And I spent like around 15 to 20 minutes uh, with him. He doesn't know me. He just like realized that I'm a big Maradona fan. Uh, we had a chat. We sang together. Uh, he loves hugs. He loves good hugs. Mm-hmm. And his, uh, even when like he's hugging you and kissing you like a man to man, like a uh, brotherly kiss, it's like warm and like, it was like the best 15 to 20 minutes I've ever had with Maradona. Like, because, and, and there were no fans, no media. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, nobody was in a rush. Uh, we just met two people who met. One who, who's me, like uh, admires this uh, uh, figure, and he was happy at the time, and uh, he was gone. And that was the best memory I've had, and the first uh, ever encounter with him. Yeah. So you're in a hotel. You bump into Maradona, yeah. and you start singing together tell, yeah, tell, tell me more about that that's yeah, really yeah, that's <laughs> like uh, 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 when, when he when he said like yes I can take a picture with him and I followed him there was one guy with him his friend and the other guy who was holding the ashtray and we went into like a small uh, VIP room uh, I got greeted as if I'm like important as him mm-hmm. because like it was like really like a VIP uh, room and he sat there and we started talking and then he was too happy uh, and then I asked him like uh, for a picture and then I wanted to leave. The moment I left because I was like not believing like I really met Maradona now, like it just happened. Then I stopped and I'm like, I went back, like nobody kicked me out, nobody, Maradona wasn't like, uh, he was okay with me being around. So I went back and his friend was sitting uh, facing him and he was uh, holding his camera, his mobile and uh, Maradona was singing his songs like his famous songs. So I went back and I started singing with him. <laughs> and he was like a more of like uh, admiring what I've done. And he felt like I'm really like a Maradona fan because like I, yeah. I got along and I was singing. And then he hugged me and then we had like a couple of chats. Then uh, after that, I realized that this VVIP room or uh, 
the path where we went through is like where they receive like uh, the VIPs in the back uh, entrance of the hotel. So it's directly connected to like sort of a garage or a parking where the cars would get into into there and the door that opens from that room directly to the door of like the cars. Nobody can even like uh, be in the middle or wait in there. And then I felt and I still promise you at that moment if I went to the car or into the car with him, he would have like been fine because like this is what Diego is. He's like uh, happy. He's like uh, generous. He loves people. He's a people's people. And at that time, he was like in a good mood and he liked what I've done around him and he liked me. And if I went with him, I still regret that I didn't go to actually in the car with him seriously <laughs> at that moment. And that's when I first met him and I got my first even uh, autographed uh, photo because I always like sort of held some because I knew he was in Dubai. And I always had to have something because I bump into him one day. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, what language did you speak to him in? Because uh, his, his English was broken, yes. your and Spanish was broken. Spanish is broken, so we spoke Maradona language. The language of honest. football. You know, the language <laughs> of football. Uh, yeah, such a sad, sad loss. I mean, yeah. you know, hearing all these stories it really, really uh, makes me wish that I'd met him now. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, it's, he really seems to have a special connection with anyone that he does yes. meet on, yeah. on, on that True. front, uh, yeah. which, which is great. You've also brought this in. Yeah. Um, this One is a signed, a signed uh, Diego jersey. We love our jerseys here on the show, and it's you know really nice that you did bring this in. Yeah. Uh, where did you get this one signed then? Uh, this was back in 2014 here in Dubai. Uh, there was like a special uh, show called uh, The Victorious. Yes. And uh, in the show, he has like his room where we prep, and I was like working and a friend of the people who run the show. And we were seeing him like day in, day out. But I didn't ask him like for an autograph, mm -hmm. although I had like many earlier, like in my mm -hmm. uh, until like the last uh, episode, like the last episode of the live show at the day. Uh, and it wasn't only me. There were like uh, some uh, great players from uh, Egypt and uh, I forgot the other guy. Uh, they also asked me to take pictures for them when they are like getting their autographs or signatures on their uh, memorabilia or pictures by Maradona. So I was like, wow, these are like great Egyptian legend uh, guy. And he's asking me to take his picture to, uh, to actually document the moment that Maradona is actually, and yeah. they were with him on the show all like throughout three months. Wow. And they never even asked him for like a photo wow. or a signature, signature or anything. Everybody like waited till like the last day of the show. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was like around 2014. But, uh, but, but great stories nonetheless. I mean, uh, just to your point about the playing football with uh, Diego, yeah. um, uh, I mean, for me, it was kind of a dream come true, right? And, and I, I've kind of told this story before, but never on the, never on the show. So, um, I mean, for, for me, it was like, okay, the fact that I got a call from, from you actually, randomly, hey, come down, we're having a kick, Diego might come. Um, and, uh, you know, getting there and thinking, okay, th this is cool. Is it going to happen? Isn't it going to happen? Because there was always that, that, that um, I guess, that hint of, oh, he might not show up, yes. you know, because he's Diego, right? Um, and then all of a sudden he's there and, you know, we're, we're going to play a match with him. Like, what? Um, and then it's like, okay, let's make teams. And everyone's putting their hand up saying, well, I want to be on Diego's team. I want to be, I just kind of sat back and I said, well, hang on. I want to be. A, I want to play against That's Diego. That's what I was gonna say. You don't yeah. want to play with him. Like play yeah. against him. You know, yeah. especially like feel. if you've seen him. Like even in friendlies, even if he's playing like fifty-year-old people yeah. or sixty years or retired the players, he doesn't have like the meaning of friendly. It's like the final of the World Cup. Yes, you've seen every, that. Yes, every, every yes. Game. Yeah. yeah. Once he's like uh, on the pitch playing football five uh, against five or like uh, an official friendly, whatever match, it's like uh, no mercy. Yeah. So, so what happened was um, it, we, it, we kind of filled his team quickly and then all of a sudden um, they're like, guys, we need another defender on, uh, on the team opposing Diego's team. I was like, guys, I'll do it. I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> right. And then we kick off and lo and behold, I'm marking Diego Maradona for one half of Unbelievable. football. Unbelievable. You know, 35, 40 minutes, however long we played, right? It was, uh, it was actually a decent, decent yeah. game. How do you get on? Um, well, I will say this, there was a uh, one chance, and I'll never forget this, right? There was one chance, the ball got lobbed over the both of us into the corner, and he kind of read it, he ran, he had kind of the, he kind of read it before I did. Uh, the guy was a genius, of course. Yeah. 
Um, so he ran to the corner and I started to close him down. But it dawned on me as I was getting closer to him that this is Diego Maradona. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not just like your average Joe Blow from down the street. And so he turned, he turned around and he saw me coming to him as a defender. And you could see he kind of lifted himself like his, his brain is telling him, okay, do this, do that, go there, you know, do this step over and take him on. But obviously his body couldn't do that. Do that. So he, I saw him kind of like lift his shoulders, getting ready to kind of do something. Uh, so I kind of held off. And, um, and then he obviously understood his level at that point because he had bad knees, bad ankles, a bad back. I mean, you know, and he was 50 51 at that time or maybe just before he, yeah yeah so um he he kind of he took took a kind of step to the left and then there was another player running through he laid it off of the player and the player like smashes it and scores a goal and he comes up to me and he's like yeah <laughs> you know so it was that, like the two hands and that yeah. kind of you know fierce face yeah you know and it was um just something I'll never forget, you know. And uh, and then he kind of smacked me on the bum, and he's like, uh, you know, lucky bum. Yeah, and he's like, uh, you know, whatever. I I, 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 I was just by the hand of God. <laughs> <laughs> In all the right places. <laughs> um, and so I mean, I, I that will re remain with me forever. You know, that's uh, that's kind of a memory I'll I'll take. Yeah, I mean, me. sharing a pitch with with, with, with him, yeah. given that all he did in the world yeah. of football must have been yeah. absolutely incredible. Yeah, I guess he's that guy that sort of always makes you feel like a friend. Right, yeah. whenever you whenever you see him, yeah. like he he makes you feel special uh, to to see him. In his but unique. to Mo's point from earlier, it really depends on which Maradona which you get. Which one you get? Because yeah. I'd also sat in a press conference with him uh, when he was managing El Wassel, and um, when whenever there was press around, whenever there was f uh, photographers, journalists, yeah, it, it was a different Diego. He he, it was the the jaded Diego, yeah. the Diego that's been harassed since the eighties. You know, constantly yeah. followed and abused, and you know. Um, exploited yeah. and you know, and I think going, you know, yeah, 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 coming from a culture like you know, like Argentina, or or especially when he went to Italy, mm. and you know, I remember hearing stories that he had to go to the the shopping malls at three o'clock in the morning, yeah. so that he wasn't bothered mm. by people e exactly, and you know, he would he would do all of that because he, like you said, would be would be harassed mm. by the public and by the media throughout the day. And I think we were talking earlier that one of the reasons why he loved living in the here in the United Arab Emirates is that that didn't really happen. Yep. I mean, yes, at press conferences and at these events and everyone wanted to be, you know, around him. But general day to day, um, people generally would leave him alone. People were quite respectful. And yes, he'd get the occasional ask for a picture, but you're not being mobbed and prevented from entering shops or or uh, yeah. having to go out at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I mean, he was allowed to, to sort of live, live freely out here and, and, and get on with his life, which was, which was a really nice thing. And it says something about the culture, I think, of, of, of this country and how we're respectful of, yeah. of, uh, of big figures like that. So, you know, I'm glad that he graced the UAE with, with his presence. I mean, I sort of saw, and I'm sure we all did, a massive uptick in global interest in the UAE league at that time, you know, yeah. from places as far afield as Argentina. Yeah. You had... Footballers visiting here, you know, Aguero came down because obviously of his relation to the Maradona family, watched Al Wassel games, you know, you had tons of expats going to matches, uh, you know, Al Wassel putting, you know, a Spanish uh, Twitter account out and things like that. So things were happening that had yeah. never really happened in the UAE league before. And I think he brought that sort of uh, necessity to it. And he sort of took the UAE league uh, and put it on a global pedestal temporarily because then they weren't able to kind of capitalize on that and kind yeah. of keep that going, unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, even like uh, the likes of Aguero, Van Persie, uh, Peter Reed, like when he mm -hmm. for the first time after 30 years in yeah. the UAE. Yeah. Yeah. I was here. Yeah, uh, okay. uh, they even went and met him in Al Wasso. And I remember I personally like, put a footage with uh, Peter Reed meeting uh, Maradona at the time on my personal YouTube and it blew up. Mm. Because like uh, that footage where Peter Reed kissed the hand of Maradona that he spoke like <laughs> And uh, media slashed uh, Peter Reed like back yeah. in the UK. Uh, but yeah, it actually brought that attention to the league, the much needed attention, much needed words of uh, media coverage, global coverage. Yeah. It wasn't like just like any international, it was like global coverage. Mm. Yeah. This was uh, that big. Uh, they couldn't capitalize uh, more later on. But his presence throughout after I was, I was like seen and felt until he like, actually moved to uh, Al Fujin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
So, gentlemen, um, I have a bit of a treat for you both. Um, it's a campaign for uh, a global brand that never went live, that never was released. Um, I managed to get my hands on, on this um, because I, I was working on the campaign at the time. It involved a, a global beverage brand. So it was created to, I guess, connect, to bring two people together. One of those people being Ali bin Nasser, the ah. Tunisian referee from the Hand of God moments, from the, the match. He officiated the, uh, the, the, the World Cup match uh, where Diego pulled that move off against uh, England um, and never refereed another match again. So this was created um, as a commemorative, uh, let's say, piece uh, 30 years after the incident had happened. And it's something that's never aired before, never been seen in the public. Uh, it's something that I want us to review here, of course, in light of this uh, special occasion uh, and kind of in memory of, of Diego. Um, so. Uh, I will try not to cry. Excellent. I hope you look forward to, to seeing it. Oh, that commentary. No, no puedo pedirle perdón porque si el árbitro no me ve, yo sigo, yo sigo jugando al fútbol. He's got a point. Je suis Ali Ben Nasser, Tunisien. J'aime diriger le match depuis mon enfance. On essaie d'arbitrer dans des conditions difficiles, mais l'essentiel pour moi, c'était toujours d'avancer et de progresser et d'atteindre mon rêve d'arriver un jour à arbitrer à la Coupe du Monde. Mais un jour, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. je ne l'oublie pas. Je reçois un courrier de la FIFA en tant qu'Ali Ben Nasser pour participer Wow, we still got the letter. I mean, yeah. That's crazy. Quelle émotion j'ai eu. Je suis arrivé à mon but, à mon rêve. Goosebumps, right? Just like yeah. this guy was living his dream and... Uh, so this was four years ago? Yeah. Okay. J'arrive le jour J du match Argentine-Angleterre. Il y avait 120 000 spectateurs et toutes les télévisions du monde. Yeah. Shelton could have caught that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. And, oh. and relevant. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, there he is. <laughs> 30, 30 years on, you know. Mamma me. Mamma me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> these these are the yeah yeah stop it roto roto como diresh c'est extraordinaire c'est extraordinaire bolio merci merci esto me da a mí un una tranquilidad Closure, peace yeah. of mind. Not that Maradona was probably looking for closure, to be honest. He no. said, you know, he said, I'm done. He whistled yeah. and, that, and, that, and that's yeah. it, you know. Yeah. I think it's just a nice little reunion. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I don't know if it is. 
hand. <laughs> <laughs> cheeky as always. Yeah. Cheeky as always. No, wow. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, I mean that's that's um, something that was in in the in the works for about two years, right? So that that campaign had been planned, had been shot, uh, had been um, prepped, and was ready to go for the Euro 2016. You know, because uh, 1986, 2016, it was 30 years since the occasion had happened. Um, and that campaign was supposed to be the big campaign for that brand mm -hmm. for uh, for the Euros, right? And it was supposed to, you know, that was going to go viral. It was you know, there was a massive, massive plan around that. Um, getting quotes from the, f the the former England players. I mean, there's been volumes spoken about this goal everywhere. All the players have come out and said their pieces about it. You know, uh, Gary Lineker came out and said things. Peter Reid had come out. Uh, everyone, everyone. Peter Shilton, till this day, is still right. saying things. Um, so, I mean, uh, you know, and even the Argentinian players. Uh, but what we were going to do was kind of, you know, as a result of this campaign, as a result of that con commemorative uh, event, um, it was going to kind of be a, a you know a crowning moment for for, for the tournament, um, and uh, yeah, that that was supposed to be the the hero uh, that was going to be used. Unfortunately, however, um, you know once it got regionally cleared, it didn't get the global approval oh. um, for reasons I, I won't go into now. There's there's no point in doing what a that. Shame though, I mean, but like um, yeah, it was it was canned, and this this is after a, a, obviously a big expense, and um, you know to put it together, of course. And then great, amazing plans, um, you know, by, by everyone on the, the team, the emotions. I mean, and I think yeah. part of the reason why it took almost two years to put together is because they couldn't quite crack the edit, right? They had all this amazing footage, but they just couldn't get the edit right. It wasn't telling the right story. Mm. So there were many, many versions of it. Um, and I do have one of the first versions as well, which we will review straight after this. Um, but that takes on the persona of Diego and it f follows Diego's yeah. it's yeah. it goes behind the scenes with Diego to the meeting of yeah. the two uh, it's really interesting people. how it was done from the perspective of the referee yeah because I think everyone forgets about him yeah you know um relatively you know it was his dream as yeah. we said but a relatively at the time not a very well-known global referee it's not like yeah. the referees of today who kind of have personas themselves yeah. and arguably the biggest game of his life yeah. and he makes a mistake like that now We've seen it happen in Champions League games here, um, you know, with, with referees, Barcelona, Chelsea a few years ago that yep. basically crucified the refs. Yeah. You know, referees these days are under pressure to, to make decisions. If they make mistakes like that, they're gone. Gone. You know, you know they're, they're done or they're, they're crucified globally. But, but now, I mean, it was the case back then as well because yeah. Bin Nasser didn't referee another game after that. Yeah. And you've seen, you've seen now, for example, these referees get crucified and they get to tell their side of the story. Yeah. You know, they'll come out and, and, and do an interview with, with the news or, or a news outlet or something like that. But we never really heard from him, no. you know, in, in the Western no. media. Like, we, yeah. don't, we, don't re we never really got his point of view. So this yeah. kind of not only says how privileged he felt to be at the World Cup and when he yeah. got that letter. Yeah. Um, that yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's that, that little box of goods that he still keeps. I mean, you know. uh, the, uh, but the guy, he looks like a former version of himself. I know his, his age and it was 30 years on. But he's still holding on to this cherished kind of dream yeah. that he had. Um, and he looked like a broken man. You know, yeah. he wasn't able to continue doing what he truly loved doing. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the, that's the injustice that was being kind of brought, you know, well, that was kind of being resolved in this. And that's why it was yeah. so emotional and so poignant and, you know, yeah. told us such a great story. I mean, Maradona yeah. himself, um, you know, I remember seeing the clip with Lineker where he got asked about the, the goal. Mm. And he said, well, what do, they, what do they think of that back in Argentina? And they're like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, I used my, my deceptiveness. My cunning, yeah. My, my cunning. Yeah. You know, if that, if that had happened in, in, in England, the other way around, you know, there would have been a 50-50 split. People wouldn't have been happy, yeah. but a lot of people would have said, no, you know, we didn't deserve it. We yep. did it by cheating. Yep. Um, you know, the press would have kind of maybe crucified the English player for doing it. But in Argentina, it doesn't matter. No. If you can outsmart your opponent by being tricky and cunning... Um, yeah. Breaking the rules and you win, you use your brain. Fair play to you. Fair play. Yeah. You know, so, and he did it and he was, he was uh, put on a pedestal. Well, wasn't, wasn't that, that famous kind of statement by Diego that he, he kind of, he had to convince the referee that he had scored. Yeah. Yeah. And so he continued the celebration, yeah. but at the same time kind of knew that, oh, I've, I've done something here. Should I, yeah. should I be? So he, he, he said, I'm just going to, 
I'm going to hedge my bets, really. Yeah. You know? He goes up with the hand, moves yeah. his head. So yeah. it was intentional. I mean, he said he moves his head yeah. to mimic a header. Yeah. Um, sees the linesman out of the corner of his eye running back and he goes, right, I'm just going to celebrate here to kind of complete the spectacle. Yeah. And uh, the... Stuff like by doing all of this together. Yeah. I mean, who needs VAR, right? I mean, that, 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 that these days would I mean, never happen again. No, no. But it takes me to, uh, what's his face, 1966, the ghost goal by... Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I asked him, man, like, it was the opposite of what Maradona did. Maradona, like, convinced the referee that it's yeah. uh, a goal. Yeah. But Hirsch was, like, he looked at his friends and he saw them celebrating, then he started celebrating. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, wasted that goal yeah. at the times. So, but Maradona had that uh, yeah. opposite way and he actually convinced everybody. I mean, Jeff Hurst's goal would have been, would have been easily solved by the ball bounces over the line. Roger Hunt is literally there standing on the line. All yeah. he's got to do is header it in, but Roger Hunt just goes, nope, it's a goal, and just turns around and walks back. And <laughs> it's like, I've seen it, it's a goal. Um, too honest, the Brits, um, yeah. or the English. But uh, no, I completely get you. And I think, um, you know, we'll never, we'll never see something like that again uh, right. on the world stage, unless there's a really big mistake in VAR uh, moving forward, but it's sort of permeating into the game now. And I think referees are protected a lot more yeah. um, by VAR. Yeah. Um, the, the criticism is not of the ref, but it's of the team that's sitting in the office or in the yeah. in up in the stadium uh, for yeah. getting it right or getting it wrong. The referees like, hey, I'm just I'm just doing my job here on the pitch. And unfortunately, the referees aren't being held accountable either. So even if they do make a mistake, no one's coming out at a later stage and saying, actually, guys, it was officially a mistake. Or you know, it's the VAR's mistake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they're absolved of that kind of you know. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen with uh, Ali Ben Nasser. Yeah. No. yeah. So guys, if you like that never seen before footage of Diego Maradona and Ali Ben Nasser, the referee from that famous game in 1986, please share it on as much as you can. Uh, comment below, like it, let us know what you think. Um, you know, again, no one has ever seen this advert before um, around the world. So it's a world first. Let us know what you think. Part two coming up very, very shortly.